Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea, continuing our budget series. We're on to budget colorless non-permanent. So non-permanents are instants and sorceries. So this is actually such a weird one because it's such a short list. Like I'm used to, uh, you know, anything in magic, there's like lists of hundreds of cards. This is like less than 20, that's crazy. Anyway, so we'll get into it here. Okay, there you go. So what is a colorless card? Colorless instants and sorceries or non-permanents may be put into any deck without issues due to lack of color identity. So these are cards you can use in any deck. That's kind of the main advantage. These spells are usually weaker and less efficient than colored s s uh, spells of similar effect. So almost every time I post one of these, people are like, oh, this card is better, this card is better. Like, yes, the mono blue scry and draw is better than the colorless one. Absolutely it is, but that's not the point. If you can't use blue, then you want to use this, is the idea. These also may benefit from uh, cost reduction easily. So mana cost reduction, there's a lot of things that do that. And almost all of them will work with these. So with one little exception, but we're going to get to that. And all right. Why use a colorless card? These can be used as gap filled cards. Basically cards that can do something other cards in your deck are bad at. So. For instance, I think Mardu is a very good example, and that's what I'm going to use in the video here. That's white, red, black, so it doesn't have blue or green. Blue, card draw, scry, things like that. Green, you got especially finding lands. So mana fixing, Mardu is not good at. There are surprisingly small, there's a surprisingly small selection of these types of spells. Yeah. When I looked up the whole list, I um, I'm sure it was less than 20 cards. Which for magic is insane. Almost anything you look up, you're going to find like 300. But anyway. Alright, so Warping Whale. This is a very good card, I think. Very underrated. Okay, you must use a colorless mana to pay the colorless symbol. So again, a lot of these, when there's a number, first of all, you can use any mana, including colorless mana. Secondly, cost reduction, you can use on that as well. Here, it actually shows the symbol right there. You can see in the little circle. And that means you actually need a colorless mana. Not a blue mana, not a green mana, not a, you know, anything else. One colorless mana. You have to be able to make one colorless mana. If you have soul ring, that makes two. So already you're set. Uh, that can be kind of a downside, but I feel like making colorless mana is so easy it doesn't even matter. But anyway. This provides... <clears throat> excuse me. Provides options, which I think is actually the best thing to have in your deck. Is options, right? Flexibility. People are not going to be able to counter your deck as easily if you have a lot of flexibility. But anyway, so you can exile target creature with power or toughness, one or less. So if they have any like one ones or zero, even like a zero eight wall, you can just exile it right away. Counter target sorcery spell. So uh, on the budget group, uh, one of the admins, Tim, actually point out that most uh, board wipes are our sorcery spells, right? So if you want something to counter the board wipe, this is the thing. Definitely very, very useful. I think underrated. People see sorcery and they think, oh, only sorcery? But it's in a game, it's going to be useful at some point. And you can also create a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi that you can sacrifice for mana on a later turn. So you can use the token generator, but yeah. Anyway, the counterspell is, to me, what kind of outshines everything else. Anyway, 47 cents for that. Well worth it. Definitely well worth it. 
And if you don't have blue, you should have that. But anyway. Environmental Sciences allows any deck to search for a basic land. Okay, it does have to be a basic land and put it into hand. Again, this is one of the card I posted and people were like, oh, it doesn't go into the battlefield though. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not green. It's not as good as a green, but if you, again, the Mardu example, if you don't have green, this is a great thing to have. I've had games where I'm sitting there with my Mardu deck, like, oh, I can't cast like most of my spells to I'm missing white. If I had one white, this would be like a different game. It, this card gets you the, the, you know, the basic land you need, which is very, very good. Again, if you don't have access to green, I would use this card. It is 15 cents. So 15 cents for a very useful card, I think. An introduction to Prophecy. This is Scry 2, draw one. Again, not a great effect. It costs three. Even at three, I think that's pretty good. Scry 2, draw one. So you're getting, you know, you get to look at two cards and then draw one card for three mana that you're doing three things. It feels like it's not bad, really. And you could use, you know, mana reduction. But yeah, most useful in decks that do not have access to blue. If you have blue, you can play one blue mana for Brainstorm. Brainstorm is better. Yeah, absolutely. This is 25 cents. It's not the best card. If you have blue, don't play this. If you can't play blue, again, like Mardu has no blue, this is very useful. This can set you up for your next turn. And yeah, help you draw cards. Sort through what, get what you need when you need it. So just a very good card, actually. Introduction to Annihilation. So Exiles target permanent, non-land permanent, sorry. Its controller draws a card. This is actually pretty much the same as some white things, but yeah. Anyway, it is somewhat flexible in that you could target your own thing and then draw a card off of like, if you target a token. Five to draw one card is too expensive. Hopefully you'd be, have a way to kind of minimize the cost there. But if your deck does not have access to white, this is definitely something to, con to consider. It's only 19 cents. So to me, 19 cents is worth it, you know? Five mana, not so much, but you know. If you don't have white, it might be worth it. Scour from Existence. So this is kind of an upgrade to the last card. It does cost seven instead of five, though, too, right? Seven mana is getting real steep. Exile target permanent. Okay, any permanent, right? It does not say non-land. It just says permanent. So you can exile someone's land. If someone has a real, like, Cabal Coffers or something that's causing a lot of trouble, there's your solution. I think having this in your deck just in case you need it is always a good idea, but it is most useful if you can create a lot of colorless mana. For instance, Sahili the Gifted, her plus one, well, first of all, she's a planeswalker. Her, her plus one allows you to add mana equal to the number of artifacts you have. So you have an artifact deck and this you could cast really easy with her, right? Use her plus one, that's probably already easy, you know, seven, and then you just exile something. You get rid of a major threat. Uh, a little more conditional just because of the mana cost, but still a very, very good. 50 cents, 50 whole cents for this one. So we're looking at very budget, that's for sure. Like this is not one where we're squeaking by. Mascot exhibition. Okay, first of all, just as an idea, that's awesome. That's hilarious. It's like, I'm gonna bring a bunch of mascots out and they're gonna fight for me. Like, the Philly Fanatic is coming. Oh no. Anyway, creates three token creatures. Again, this does cost seven. Still very steep, but it creates three token creatures. 
Three creatures for seven is pretty good, actually. They're not impressive creatures. I think the one that kind of stands out is the Inkling. Again, that is a 2-1 Inkling with flying. Okay, so if you don't have enough flyers in your deck, maybe even consider this, right? It's not a great solution, but it might be useful. And in decks that care about creating tokens, this is probably like a very good card, but anyway. So it is 50 cents for this one. Again, with mana reduction, I think it is potentially a great card, but anyway. Not of this world. This is another colorless counterspell. Counterspells are so good, always. But anyway, let's talk about counter target spell or ability. Spell or ability. Okay, this is a big part. You can counter an ability that targets a creature. Again, it does have to target. So a board wipe, you cannot counter a board wipe with this, right? Anything where it doesn't actually target anything, it doesn't work. But yeah. If you target your, you can protect your own creature from being, you know, from a spell or ability. And if its power is seven or greater, this is free. Like it's a counter spell that costs seven, which is really bad, but you can potentially cast it for free and it's up to you, right? It's not something, it's not conditioned on something your opponent does. It's conditioned on you having something on the battlefield. Again, high power creatures are going to get tar targeted over others. So if you do have a creature that has like 10 attack power, the first thing people are going to target is that, th that creature, right? So it's not like there's an equal chance any of them get, you know, like doom bladed or something. That, that's no, that isn't how anything works. If you have a very high damage, especially if you have like a Voltron deck, this is going to save your commander. This is, I think, an actually pretty incredible spell, and it's 80 cents. A counter spell, even if it is somewhat limited in its usefulness, that you can count or uh, that you can cast for free. Free counter spell. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. 80 cents for a free counter spell. Ugh. Okay, I seven isn't even that high, but anyway, okay, definitely something to consider in any deck where you're going to have high attack power. In our next video, we will be talking about colorless creatures because we will do an Eldrazi video later. We're going to try to focus on non Eldrazi creatures, right? Eldrazi, if you do colorless creatures and include Eldrazi, it's just a list of Eldrazi, so I'm going to take that out. But anyway, all right, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit subscribe and like on the video. All right, take it easy. I will see you later.